OK, so the next thing that we look at is roots of quadratics and how we can pull in some of these ideas of complex numbers. So let's begin. It says, um, let's solve x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0, and we'll call its roots alpha and beta. So probably the first thing I would recognise with this equation of x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0 is I'd see that it can factorise. looks like it's going to factorise to an x plus 5 and then an x minus 1, that should work. So our solutions are that x is equal to minus 5, or that x is equal to 1. So we've got this, these roots, alpha and beta. Let's say that alpha is minus 5, and beta, the Greek letter here, is 1. So how do these roots relate to the original equation? Well, I'm sure you can spot that this bit that we've got at the end here is alpha multiplied by beta. And hopefully what you can spot about this section that we've got here, the plus 4, is that it's the negative of alpha plus beta. Alpha times beta is minus 5, which is here. Alpha plus beta is minus 4, but we have negated it to get the plus 4 that we've got here. So the roots relate to the original equation by the, um, the C part being the roots multiplied and the B part being the roots added and negated. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and generalise this. Now, this is actually something that I repeat in chapter four for roots of polynomials. Um, but I quite like to pull that chapter back into this bit. So if you want to leave um, exercise E and F from chapter one until you've done chapter four, that might be a good idea. But I'm going to show you sort of both methods with this. So it says here, if alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic ax squared plus bx then, uh, plus c, then we should be able to say that it is written in this form here, just like we had here. The roots come from this kind of setup, so x minus alpha and x minus beta will correspond to the roots of alpha and beta. And we also factorise that a out at the beginning that we've got there. Now, the exercise you're about to do won't have any a's at the beginning. It will just be quadratics that have got a single term for x squared. So I'm doing this in a more generalised kind of way. Okay, what I'm going to do on this right hand side here is I'm going to expand those brackets so that we have x squared minus alpha x minus beta x and then you get the plus alpha beta because those two negatives multiplying. And so then I'm going to just collect together a few things inside here. I'm going to take out a negative and I'm going to have alpha plus beta x and then I've got my plus alpha beta. So this bit here looks very, very similar to what we've just talked about up here. Last thing I'll do is just expand these brackets. We get ax squared. Then we have minus a alpha plus beta x plus a alpha beta. And we're saying that this is all equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we do now is we do something which is called comparing coefficients. And the comparing coefficients that I'm going to do here, I'm going to start off by comparing the B part that we've got. So we've got plus B must be equal to this bit that we've got here. So we get that B is equal to minus A alpha plus beta. They must be equal to each other because this is the X coefficient. And if these two things are the same, then they must be equivalent. So I'm going to divide by minus A here so that we get that alpha plus beta is equal to minus A uh, sorry, minus b over a. And that's really what we've just said here. In this case, a was just 1, so the sum of the roots was the negative part of this b bit that we've got here. Now I'm going to compare these other coefficients that I've got. So I've got the plus c is going to be the same as this bit that we've got here. So we can say that c equals a alpha beta. So I'm going to divide by a so alpha multiplied by beta is equal to c divided by a. Now, like I just said, in the exercise that we're about to do, a is always going to be equal to 1. So you can just say that the sum of the roots is the negative um, coefficient of x, and the product of the roots is just the, uh, the c part of the quadratic that we've got here. So as a little summary I've got, if alpha and beta are the roots of this equation, this quadratic, then the sum of the roots is the minus b over a. You can see that's true here. The sum of these roots was minus 4, and it's, it's minus 4 over 1. And the product of roots alpha beta is c over a. So the product of these roots was minus 5, and it's just minus 5 over 1, or the same thing. So I've just written this as a preview of chapter 4, and you can use all of chapter 4 skills to solve these types of questions, but I'm going to show you both methods. I think I prefer chapters, chapter 4's method. 
So talking about a little bit more about um, roots that we have here, with roots of a quadratics, um, they always come in complex conjugate pairs. Now we've just defined what conjugate means. So I've written if alpha is the root of a quadratic equation with real coefficients and alpha is a complex number, then the other root must be its complex conjugate. And remember that's alpha with a little star, a little asterisk up in the corner. Well, why is that true? It's really to do with this part that we've got inside of the quadratic formula, because when you come up with a complex root, it is when the b squared minus 4ac part, it's when this is less than zero. And you get this plus or minus part here. So this part would contribute to the imaginary part of the equation. The minus b and the 2a is the part that contributes to the, the real part of the solution. I think I said equation, I mean solution. So it makes sense that you have them in a complex conjugate pair because you have the plus and minus of this imaginary part that you've got here. So let's have a go at an example. We're going to do a chapter four method and then we'll do the, maybe it's not a longer method, but I think after you do chapter four, it's kind of nice to just be able to stick with one method. So it says, given that alpha equals seven plus two i is one of the roots of a quadratic equation with real coefficients, state the value of the other root beta and then find the quadratic equation. Well, pretty obviously, if alpha is seven plus two i, because of what we've just written above, then the other root must be the conjugate pair, which is seven minus two i. So I'm gonna do the roots of polynomials method, the chapter four method. Now the chapter four method says that the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta, is going to be equal to minus b over a. And it says that the product of the roots is just going to be C over A. And in this particular exercise, we're just going to let A equal 1. So alpha plus beta is going to just be equal to minus B. So I'm going to add together these two things that we've got. So we have 7 plus 2i plus 7 minus 2i is equal to minus B. So the two i's cancel and you just get left with minus 14 equals b. So our equation is going to be x squared minus 14x, because remember it's our ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So what we need to do now is find out what the c part is. So we know that the roots are going to multiply together. So we're going to do alpha beta equals just c, because a is 1. So we're going to do 7 plus 2i multiplied by 7 minus 2i equals c. So you might remember how to do these as the shortcut, but you're just going to have the 7 times 7, and then you're going to add the um, the two parts squared. So it becomes 49 plus 4 equals c. So that's c is equal to 53, meaning that our equation, the answer to this one that we've got here, is this x squared minus 14x plus 53 equals zero. And you can check that by putting that in your calculator. And I'm going to show you a method that I think is perhaps slightly longer. Um, I would rather you not always use this one. I'd rather you try and focus on using the chapter four one once you've learned chapter four. There's just less for you to memorize and it's a little bit simpler, I think. So the longer method, the general idea says that if alpha and beta are roots, then x minus alpha brackets x minus beta equals zero. And this is going to be the same thing for cubics and quartics. So because we know that these are our two roots here, we should be able to say that x minus 7 plus 2i and x minus 7 minus 2i has got to be equal to zero. So what we need to do is just expand the brackets and find what the quadratic is. I just find this is maybe a little bit more messy. So I'm going to expand these brackets. I'm going to do the x multiplied by these parts to begin with. So that's going to be x squared minus 7 minus 2ix. And I'm going to multiply everything by this part. So that's minus 7 plus 2ix. And then these things are going to be multiplied, but there's two negatives. So it's going to make a positive. And it's 7 plus 2i, 7 minus 2i, which is equal to 0. So you get x squared minus 7x plus, careful because there's a negative and a negative, 2ix minus 7x minus 2ix, and then this bit still is going to expand to 49 plus 4 equals 0. Same thing as before where these i parts are going to cancel, and we end up with x squared minus 14x plus 53 
equals zero. So obviously they are the exact same thing. You come up with this same solution that we've got here. Um, but it's probably worth just knowing this is what you eventually learn about in chapter four, these kind of patterns that we have here. So why not just stick with using this one? Um, if you want to though, you can obviously experiment with both methods. So I've got a question here that you could have a go at doing. Um, I'm gonna do this one really quick and then you can have a go at exercise 1E. Okay, so I am gonna start off by doing my chapter four method that I've got over here. Um, I am going to say, well, one of the roots, if one of the roots is 2 minus 4i, then the other root must be 2 plus 4i. So I know that the sum of the roots is minus b over a. And clearly in this case here, a is just 1. So the sum of the roots is just minus b. Well, when I add these two roots together, I get 2 minus 4i plus 2 plus 4i is minus b. So that's minus 4 equals b, obviously these bits cancel and then we're going to do the negation. The other thing is that we know that the product of the roots is just c over a, so in other words the product of the roots is just the c part that we've got there. So it's going to be 2 minus 4i multiplied by 2 plus 4i is c and we get the 2 times 2 is 4, the minus 4i times the plus 4i is just going to be 16 and so c is 20. So we put this all back together, this time it's with z, we get z squared minus bz, which is going to be minus 4z plus 20 equals 0. So in this particular case that we've got here, p is minus 4 and q is 20. If you wanted to, at this stage here and here, we could have replaced b and c with p and q, either of those would have worked. Now, if I'm going to do the other method, I could have done it like this. I could have said it's z minus 2 minus 4i multiplied by z minus 2 plus 4i. And that's going to be equal to 0. So that's z squared minus 2 minus 4i z uh, minus 2 plus 4i z plus 2 minus 4i 2 plus 4i, whoops, squeeze that in at the end, z squared minus 2z plus 4iz minus 2z minus 4iz plus 4 plus 16 equals 0. You can always need these imaginary parts here and here to cancel. So we get z squared minus 4z plus 20 equals 0. So p is minus 4 and q is 20. So it's worth knowing that there are both methods here. Um, good luck at having a go at exercise 1E.